Welcome to the Essex Artist Spotlight. We're here with Peter Denbo, Studio 218. Peter, thanks for taking the time to share with us. Today. Thanks for having me. Hey, tell us a little bit about your background. Well, um, my background, I was born and raised in a jewelry store, so it's pretty much all I know. Um, I started working for my mom at the age of 19 as a summer job and uh, never looked back, basically decided that jewelry, uh, despite what I had told all of my, my parents' customers, that I was never going to be like my parents and be jewelers, that uh, indeed there was something to this industry. And I, I love it. And I, I hope to die being a jeweler. So. Oh, awesome. So now, it, tell us a little bit about your style and, and how you came up with your style. And I know you do all custom. So tell us a little bit about how you... Well, my style... I would like to say is um, it would be evolved from a number of different uh, techniques that have been in the jewelry industry for thousands of years. Uh, and I also try to incorporate technology, 3D printing, computer modeling. Uh, most of what I prefer to make is in metal. So it's basic metal smithing. So you use files and gravers and a lot of time. and. Uh, I like to integrate things of nature. Predominantly, I'm influenced by the ocean. Uh, I grew up in Honolulu, Hawaii, so uh, it's, it's close to my heart. And so quite often you'll see in a lot of my pieces uh, spirals, which are usually, um, I would say, uh, evocative of the ocean and, and its waves and its nature. Absolutely. Uh, and Tell us a little bit about your process. So a client comes to you, has a vision or an idea of what they want. They, do they come to you with a sketch? Do you give them some conceptual drawings? Or <laughs> but if I'm lucky, kind of yeah. <laughs> if I'm lucky, they're an artist. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Um, after 32 years in, in the business, you kind of get an idea that, that certain people have certain styles. And uh, I've been quite good at reading people's minds, but usually what happens is uh, they they either come to me with an idea or a concept, sometimes a drawing, and then um, we refine it, usually using uh, computer-aided design, which the, the, the technology that I spoke about earlier, it helps uh, provide three-dimensional angles of, of pieces and, and allows you to um, zoom into the piece and see far greater detail than than the sketches that I used to do uh, provide so uh, and then and then once that happens if they still well I don't know what it looks like on a screen uh, we'll print it up in a, in a wax form yeah. uh, and then you can see with your very own eyes that that idea as it were before it's turned into something expensive and metal because what I work in isn't isn't inexpensive golds right. and platinum. So now, like, when, when do they come to you with the gemstones? Do you negotiate that part of the project, or yes, uh, and all of that? On all, yeah, all <laughs> of the above. <laughs> I, I've I've had people come to me with their teeth. Uh, I've had people come to me with ashes. I've had people come to me with diamonds, and sometimes they go, "I just want you to find me something." So yeah, uh, it, it it runs the gamut between. Uh, it's amazing how, how sentimental uh, gemstones can be for people. So quite often, it's their own stone. And they want something that is representative of, uh, well, like, like that piece up there is uh, representative of my client's, uh, her father. And uh, it's... Um, so how long have you been part of the Essex? Six years. I've been okay. here six years. Uh, I moved from retail uh, which was terrifying because I spent my whole life in retail and was used to people constantly coming in and asking for things to not having any of that at all and, and relying on uh, word of mouth and fortunately I have a, a large very very loyal following of people so uh, the, the Essex has been a wonderful step away from from that yeah yeah, yeah. So it kind of allows you to concentrate on your art and your... That your... is, that and having these subtly facing windows that provide the sunlight 
um, is without a doubt one of the greatest level ups in my in my work is being able to work uninterrupted. Right. Uh, there were countless times where I would be in the middle of an incredibly intense piece and someone would walk in and ask me where Target was or you know, what time the movie was. Or, Can I get my band polished? Yeah. <laughs> would you change my watch battery? Yeah. Yes, I will. <laughs> so now you kind of touched on it, but some of the advantages as far as I know for myself, you know, having a studio here, it's great to have the camaraderie, oh, have, so have things to bounce ideas there's off There's some fantastic of. artists here for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's one of my favorites. Uh, Mark Gisdorf is one of my favorite, Tom Tuchia. Yeah. See, I mean, I, I, I try and talk to them on a regular basis. You, you just, you wind up being inspired when you're around art. That's the other thing. And then the retail store being next to GameStop, there there were no artists. It was just, it was just like, here, here I am. Kind of uh, on my Right, way. right. Yeah, so. So now, what would you say to aspiring artists? Somebody just getting into, you know, they want to make whatever they want to make. You know, just some words of wisdom. Love it. Just love what you do, and if you don't, then don't do it. Um, right. Because that, that's that's really, I think that's that's why I keep being a jeweler. Is it's it's fun and um, it's ever changing in a lot of ways. There's there's so many facets of this this art that that I could explore, um, and never be afraid to take the chances. So many jewelers that I have trained over the years were terrified to put themselves out there. I think maybe if that's a judgment on themselves, uh, because of course your work is intimately inherently who you are. Yeah. And so uh, putting yourself out there is extremely scary. Um, but for you to be able to create a true form of your art, you have to do that. Right. And you got to get it out there and you got to take that chance. Yeah, you know, yeah. That's, that's and practice. Practice, practice, practice. practice. Perfect. <laughs> spend about <laughs> spend about twenty five years doing it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then exactly. you might make some money. <laughs> so now I know I'm going to have a link to your website at the bottom of this presentation. Um, how else can people get a hold of you with if somebody wants to go through the process? Peter the Jeweler on Facebook. Uh, Peter Denbo. The last name is hard to spell on Instagram. PeterTheJeweler.com. Oh. That's about it. I'm not easiest person on earth to find, but or you could just ask around. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, Peter, thanks for taking the time yep. to share with us today. I really appreciate it, giving us a little Thank little you. inside insight on this. Uh, thanks for being part of the Essex. Thank you. Yep.